we have to shape a narrative that we decide to exactly. tell. Exactly. Tell our own stories. Yeah. And not wait for the West to tell our stories. Yeah. But we must begin to embrace our own stuff. Things have changed. There's a shift. The new cool is here. Yeah. We are the new cool. This yeah. is us. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Eye of Africa. I am your host, Aina Fadina. Today we are talking to the multi-talented Laulu Shobenjo. He's a Nigerian artist, lawyer, musician. He wears so many hats, I don't even know like which one to like claim him today. So, but anyway, he's here with us today. Hey Laulu. Hi. <laughs> nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. Thanks How's everything? Yeah, fine, fine, fine. Thanks for having me. It's always it's always fun to. Yeah. It's up to the beautiful I know <laughs> Thank you. Model I know Farina. Thank you. It's yeah. it's one of the things where they're like, okay, which label do I claim today? <laughs> but it's it's okay. I think yeah. that's a beauty of life, the ability to claim all these different labels um, that encourage and you know push us as in yeah. a in a positive light. Yeah. So that's it's been a hectic eighteen months for you. Yeah. Super hectic. It's crazy, yeah. Yeah. So it's crazy. you know, it's we are starting off the interview this way, but there are a lot of times as creatives that we don't know when to give up. We don't know when to continue. Hmm. Let's go back 18 months and let's see where your life is today. I'm not even going to talk about what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> Check his Instagram page. You can see what he's been up to. Oh, I man. Yeah. I mean, it's just... I mean, as creatives, I think one of the most important things to to consider is where you want to get to mm -hmm. and what are you willing to sacrifice to get there. And also being able to navigate, you know, from failure to failure to failure without losing, like, enthusiasm, without losing mm -hmm. focus, without losing your drive. I think that's the most important thing, without losing drive. Because, of course, you're going to fail, 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 fail mm -hmm. to succeed. So, mm -hmm. I mean, not to be scared of failure itself in the sense that you're going to try a lot of things that aren't going to work. Right. But you're going to eventually find that thing that's going to work, it's going to resonate with people, and then, boom, there's a spark in them. You just keep pushing. Right. Yeah. And where do you so. find that thing to keep pushing from? Hmm. Obviously, passion is one thing in this. Yeah. Yeah, but everyone talks about gut feeling. Yeah. But when those books are coming in... <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now, now that that's where it's different for for everybody, and you know, it's sometimes it's the rational things sometimes to do when you're faced with like like when I quit my job, like my my father thought it was rational, mm -hmm. the most rational thing to do. Mm -hmm. Like, why would you quit human rights job? You know, right. we were already talking about you know you need to go to this and get your LLM, you need to do that, and then you right. know, you know, we love your passion, but you know that doesn't really matter. You know, mm -hmm. you need to be more more practical. Mm -hmm. You know. Now, a lot of times, a lot of creatives that actually succeed, most times are very rational people, mm -hmm. in the sense that what is rational to a um, normal person, like, right. you know, when they keep doing something over and over again and you don't get results, a rational person looks at it like, okay, this is not working, so let's do something else. Right. No, but then that comes to persistence, also the, it's the thing like between persistence and also, you know, um, rationality, because you know what you're capable of, mm -hmm. you know what you made up of, you know what you want mm -hmm. to get out of this. Mm -hmm. So as a creative, I've always known that I have capabilities, you know, beyond anything. I knew what I could do, but I just needed the right timing, um, also being able to understand that I need to be in the right place. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Network with people who right. like mine to know. So, right. like my move from Nigeria to New York right. and to Brooklyn was very strategic. strategic right. You know, was more like I needed a space that's more accommodating, where I could get a lot more done, mm -hmm. and also where I could I have access to tools and mm -hmm. things that I want. I needed to work with. So, I mean, so yeah, it was crazy at first. You know, people were like, "Oh, so what are you doing now?" You know, did music. You know, went south by southwest. You know, did a lot of things, and then. The art began to take off gradually, you know, and I started doing other things, you know, mm -hmm. like everything is my canvas, the mm -hmm. model, like mm -hmm. just switching it up and trying mm -hmm. to get my art out there. And there was a moment where I started painting people's mm -hmm. shoes and painting jackets and painting stuff, like just moving from the traditional art, artist to canvas and gallery space. I decided to take the gallery to people. I see. Literally, you know, like people put on clothes, they walk in galleries, you know, you don't need to do that whole, mm -hmm. like, Art is not supposed to be like 
constraint to walls mm. in museums or right, you know right. those spaces. Art could be anywhere. Right. Oh me, my goodness, that is insane. It's great how your artwork it goes on human body, it goes on canvas, it goes on anything. And like anything. you said, the world is your canvas. That's beautiful. And, and this part is uh, it's called it's called the um, uh, it's, 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 it's reptile. It's called mm. Mm. Right. And then, did you try to get into with your art? Did you try to get into galleries first? Did yeah. you do that whole gallery chase? Yeah, I tried. And then, and it you was just it, they expand on that gallery hustle. Oh man, you just sometimes you have to. You hit the pavement, you know. You go places, you knock on doors, and they ask you if you have representation. You're like, oh yeah, you're looking at me, and they're like. Mm, yeah, I don't really want more. Yeah. And you know, you check out the shows they're doing, and you're like, I mean, these artists are not even here. A lot of the yeah. artists, the curations that you get, the moment you get the you get all these places, and, and the African artists are not even there. They're being curated by Europeans yeah. or you know, people from America who have no real connection to the right. art. And for me, that was like, I'm like, I want to be the artist, and I want to be able to tell my own stories. I want mm -hmm. to be present, and tell people exactly what I'm doing. You know, so. I mean, it was, at first, you know, I mean, people would ask me, okay, did you go, like, I started to see the importance of, you know, people would tell me, oh, you know, the alumni of maybe, you know, Pratt Institute, mm -hmm. or alumni of different schools, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, do I just go to one of the schools just to get the, you know? But then I thought to myself that, what's the point spending all that money, right. you know, when I could actually just be producing work? Right. You know, because I already know what I want to do. Right, right. And I have, I mean, all my years through, Law school, undergrad as law, I used to like spend my spare time. What I did was read on books mm -hmm. and practice art and mm -hmm. talk about, you know, do a lot of stuff by myself. Mm -hmm. So it all paid off eventually because everything I've read on, everything I've studied is now what I'm using. Mm -hmm. So I call myself self-thought, but mm -hmm. at the same time, I, I, I had the opportunity to work with different artists in my, my career as an artist. Like in, in Lagos, I used right. to go to the Society of Nigerian Artists. I had mm -hmm. Sami Bohan. I also went to a couple of exhibitions by um, Oliver Enwongu, okay, Ben Enwongu's yeah, yeah, son, yeah. my friend. So, you know, I studied a lot of things they did, and mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I know where my art, where I want to get my art to. But what I wanted to do was put that Nigerian art in a global space, mm -hmm. put Yoruba mythology on a mm -hmm. global space. Also talk about mythologies, as you're talking about Greek mythology, I want you to right. talk about Yoruba mythology. Right. Like, our stories are very valid. Right. It's all human. You know, we're all human, so why you put one on a more higher pedestal mm -hmm. though? So I just see myself in that unique space right now. Where when you talk about African artists, mm -hmm. or you talk about Afrofuturism, mm -hmm. and Afro mysteries, you talk about Laolu, mm -hmm. and you talk about art, and talk about mm -hmm. what it's doing. So mm -hmm. I'm happy to be in that space. And just, so, you know, stories and inspiration from to actually write scripts and write stories and write stuff. You can see Shango. Shango is one. With fire. Fire. You know, he's actually celebrated with the drums, the bata drums. Yeah. It sounds like the thunder. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing. You can see the fire. You can see. Also, you can see thunderstorms. You can see the cup right there. You can see it's still right there. It's how he's worshipped. You can see all these people who are like, you know, who are inspired by Shango Pass, who's to worship Shango. Wow. You know, and also flanked Oshu by Oshu. Oshu is Oshu. like badass. Badass. badass peacock feathers, you know, you can see the string, you see the fishes and everything. And you can see the brightness, the colors, you can see her looking at herself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of And then the baby, yeah. that and sort of baby. coming in. Yep. An alcohol, what's up? Yeah, wow. So do you, do you have a problem with being called an African artist or an artist who just happens to be African? Because we have yeah. that conversation in fashion all the time. Yeah. Where, you know, certain publications want to put you in the African story because you are African. Yeah. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is, that's problemat problematic to itself, in mm -hmm. itself, because, I mean, no artist would like to be boxed. I'm an artist. Yeah. I'm an artist. I'm global. But when you often want to box an artist in saying that, oh, they're African or African descent, you're almost trying to fill in a quota, and we don't want to be that, mm -hmm. oh, the, the quota guy, or mm -hmm. the one who just, you know, he's there because they want to talk about African artists, mm -hmm. you know, he's just filling up a quota. Mm -hmm. We want to be recognized on merit for our work. Absolutely. I want to be named, you know, like I said, if you know Picasso, you know Michelangelo, I want you to know me. Right. Know my story. Right. You know, I mean, it's just every artist wants to be, most times we don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be remembered as an African. 
I want you to remember me as my, remember my art. I want you to remember what I've done, what I've contributed to, right. to society, what I brought to the stage, what I brought to humanity, right. how, how I've been able to beautify the world, basically. Every, the world is my canvas right now, so I want to be remembered as that, as such. Right. So, I mean, when it's just like people see my art and they try to box that tribal. I'm like, no, don't call my yeah. art tribal. Yeah. Because I know where you're going. Yeah. That's a very problematic word, you know. I mean, you don't see um, the European art and you call it tribal. Exit, yeah. You know, it's, well, what, what does that even Absolutely. mean? You know, we all have ethnicities. We have, I mean, that's the way we see the world. Mm -hmm. Everybody comes from somewhere. Mm -hmm. But then to be judged or to be boxed by where you come from, instead mm -hmm. of your art and what you're able to contribute, it's mm -hmm. just, you're not doing injustice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think I think that's the tricky part about translating our our narrative. Yeah. And I think that's also why it's very, very important for us to tell our own stories. Yep. You touched on Greek mythology. Yeah. We have our own like Yoruba African mythology. African mythology, yeah. And it's not being Obviously, it's been studied. Yeah. But it's not. I, I don't know how much documentation we've done because we do we document based on or you know just talking. Oral. Yeah. On oral. So how do we change that for today's digital age? Yeah. You know. I mean, honestly, it's all I'm trying to do right now. Yeah. Document it with art. Talk about it as much as possible. When I say Orisha, when I say Ori, when mm -hmm. I say Sacred Out of the Ori, mm -hmm. when I talk about the, the different um, um, Yoruba mythology when mm -hmm. it comes to gods, mm -hmm. um, I always try to tell people, compare it, like oh, when you talk about um, Shango, you can, and you can talk about Thor. Yeah. They have a lot of similarities. Right. You talk of Zeus, right. or you talk of Venus, you talk of Oshun, yeah. you talk of Oya. And a lot of people are very interested, like, oh, we never knew this actually was existed, including mm -hmm. Africans, mm -hmm. never knew Absolutely. people, yeah, yeah. And, mm -hmm. And it's, it's kind of very interesting that people don't know. So, I mean, to be in this space and not to even talk about it, I'll be doing it a lot of disservice to my people and also mm -hmm. my culture, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's very, I think it's one of the most important things to actually do is to bring, bring that to the fore mm -hmm. because it's, it's about partly who we, it's who we are. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing, I mean, they have, we have lots of mythology, lots of stories that could actually contribute to a lot of movies, you yeah. know, screenwriting and all that. Absolutely. You know, and I'm just hopeful and I'm like, yeah, now that we're shining a lot of light on this, mm -hmm. how people begin to see the potential, mm -hmm. also profit. And also Africans begin to see their the value behind, you know, what is theirs that is actually dope as mm -hmm. AF that they don't <laughs> even know, yeah. you know, and they're sitting on it and not wait for likes of Beyonce to say it's cool before that you think it's it. cool. Yeah. You know, so I just hope so. Yeah. I hope we're getting there. It's a mental thing. And I do say to some capacity that culture is commerce, art mm -hmm. is commerce. Mm -hmm. And how does that translate for the people that actually own the art? Mm -hmm. they, they are of that yeah. region. You know, mm -hmm. it's tricky. You look at the biggest art collectors of, in quotations, African art. They mm -hmm. don't look like us. <laughs> and hopefully, and I think you know, I think hopefully we change, we change to that conversation, we change that narrative where yeah. you have young, black, yeah. African, African American, whatever you know, whatever your blackness yeah, is yeah, from diaspora yeah. perspective. Yeah. Hopefully, we start collecting these collecting things. Collecting yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 just like like you said, nothing is going to change overnight. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's beginning to change, and I see a lot of young people actually, you know, reaching out to me, wanting to buy art, mm -hmm. you know, and it's kind of exciting to be alive at this point because, like, people are buying art. Yeah. Right now, people are buying art. Yeah. Of course, the hype. Yeah. And also the fact that oh, that's the hottest, oh, Nigerian artist now, the mm -hmm. hottest African mm -hmm. art, artist right now. You need to just check out his work, you know, buy his stuff, you know, because you never know. Because now people see like the value behind the art. Mm -hmm and they know it's not going anywhere, mm -hmm. and they know, okay, now is the time to actually invest. Mm -hmm. What I would like to see is not wait for it, you know? We shouldn't be the ones, like, at the, at the, at the end of the, of the bargaining, yeah. you know? We should always be the first. We should recognize our talents. We should mm -hmm. push them out. Mm -hmm. we, should, we should celebrate ourselves more. I think, like, I always tell a lot of Nigerians who reach out to me now, oh, why don't you do stuff? I'm like, there are billions. Okay, I'm going to use that. Millions of Nigerian artists in Nigeria. Help an artist today. Mm -hmm. Help them grow. I've been one of them. Mm -hmm. You know, and I always like say that don't come to me because you think, oh, he's he brings the cool factor to us. Mm -hmm. You know, I get it. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm I'm in for profit, and I'm gonna make money from my art, but at the same time, help others mm -hmm. who don't have the same platform that I have and help them grow. Right. right. Purchase them, purchase right. their art. Right. Celebrate them. Yeah. You don't wait until until 
oh, there are no New York or there are New York Times where yeah. you're like, oh, you know, he's Nigerian, yeah. now we want him because yeah. he's cool. Yeah. You know, you don't have to wait for that. <laughs> Take a look at it, you know. This is, uh, Let me see. You want to hold it? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, let me just, can you hold it? Yeah, pa. <laughs> Not a good job, ball. Oh, wow. So you can, like, take a look at it, you can see the Empire. Oh, you have the, the, the Fox. Fox yeah, um, oh. The, the music, music elements, Shakere, yeah, microphones. Oh, that's Empire, Empire sorry. Logo, Mars, and it, yeah. Lucius and Lyons. Congratulations. So, how do you find the balance psychologically between? You know, there's always a fear of like, am I the hottest thing right now? Will I be the hottest thing in five, ten years? Mm -hmm. And constantly fighting against like that notion of, is it just my time? Or is this a continued trajectory path for a long term, for long term, you know? Personally, to be honest, it, it's, it gets to me sometimes because mm -hmm. every time I'm, I'm interviewed or somebody sees me like, oh, you've done so well. This is so amazing. I love your story. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the conversation, they're like, so what's next for you? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, shit, mm -hmm. you didn't have to go there. Mm -hmm. Like, so I'm, I'm always under this pressure of, I got to say something bigger than, <laughs> you know, last right. thing just happened. Right. Like under pressure to mm -hmm. always, you know, tell people, okay, I'm working on this now. And I, to be honest, sometimes I'm just chilling. And that's just what I want to do. I just want to chill for a little bit, mm -hmm. take a break, and then come back to work. But mm -hmm. I don't think I have, I have so much, so much art, mm -hmm. so much ideas mm -hmm. that I don't think um, it's gonna run out yeah. anytime soon. Yeah. And also, I think um, I think we have come of age, mm -hmm. if you ask me. And I think I don't think, as as an African, also as an artist, I don't think we're going nowhere. I don't think this art style is going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I think it's time it's, it's in the mainstream. Mm -hmm. I think it's time we make a lot of profit off this. I think yeah. it's time somebody is actually that representative of us, yeah. you know. And I want young people to be able to look and say, oh, yeah, look at Laolu, yeah. you know, and inspire people you've never even met. Mm -hmm. Because that's the thing I want to be able to do, inspire people. Because I didn't have people like me growing up mm -hmm. to look up to. Honestly, mm -hmm. we had very old people like Benny, um, people who were very old, and they, you knew they, they went to the... England and mm -hmm. they met with the Queen and they painted the Queen. That was Benin one. And ever since, you know, you talk Wally Showing Car, you talk a fella, mm -hmm. you know, who were global, people knew them. But then, you know, now mm -hmm. you're like, so who are the new fellas? Who are the new Wally Showing Cars? Mm -hmm. Who are the young people who are actually now beginning the space and holding their head high and right. you know, you know, the contemporaries all over right. the world. I wanna be in that space. Yeah. I wanna be able to talk about, yeah, this is what we're doing mm -hmm. and recognize it. Mm -hmm. Our story is valid. My name is Bali, so you better, you know, <laughs> watch out. Get with it. <laughs> Get with it, you know? Yeah, so it's just exciting. Yeah. And just, yeah. Social media has been a great yep. tool, um, instrument, or whatever you want to call it, a great medium, platform, yeah, yeah. that's helped with your career. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the impact that social media has had for you in right. your life, in your career? I like to approach it this way. Mm -hmm. Social media is not an instrument anymore. Mm. Social media is not social. It's not that, okay, that's social media. Mm. And then I have um, my private life. A lot of times now, social media is life, literally. Mm. Wait, just talk to people who are 15 and younger, 20 mm -hmm. and under. Mm -hmm. They're more likely to be um, more afraid of being um, made fun of online that made fun of in real life. Mm. That yeah. that is not yeah. us, it's not yeah. our generation. Like yeah. I'm like, of course I was my you know, but then you need to understand what the world is shifting to. Mm. Right now it's not just it's not social media anymore. If you're not on plugged in and mm. I, I don't know what you're doing because mm. pretty much everybody is online. Mm. You are your own like like the artist has never been this powerful. Cut away third and um, middleman. Yeah. That is one of the major problems they had. You're not you're not waiting for anybody's validation. You are on your own. Literally, you can shape out your life. Mm -hmm. 
you have the power to put out what you want to put out. Mm -hmm. People get interact with you, get feedback almost immediately. Mm -hmm. You can also interact with people all over the world mm -hmm. in real time. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. When mm -hmm. you think about it, this was not the case 10, 20 years ago. Yeah. So it's a unique space to be in. I always tell people that, man, if you're not on it, mm -hmm. then I don't know what you're doing. You might as well be on that rock. <laughs> I, think, I, I think for me, I do find the space tricky in mm -hmm. a sense that, you know, how much do you put out? And also you have control over it. Yeah. But then you're competing with so many other people. It's like that, how on do I always have to be? Yeah, that's the tricky part. Yeah, people around me say, oh, you need to get off social media. You need to get off. You're always yeah. looking at but You need to be creative. I'm like, yeah, I need to be creative. At the same time, I need to be looking at what exactly is happening out there and mm -hmm. see who my comp... Like, like, it's crazy now that people know my art and mm -hmm. secret art of the Ori, and I see everybody spinning off it. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a thin line between, um, now they say inspired by Laulu or inspired oh. by... There's a difference in inspired by and literally just copying somebody. Yeah, so yeah. people just copy, <laughs> yeah. literally just take my stuff because I'm paying on people, paying on stuff, and, I'm, yeah. and in my mind, I'm like, wow, you know, I see what they're doing, you know, and it helps me see exactly what people are up to, mm -hmm. or people who want to hire you, but they can't forge you, they can't get you, and then they look for somebody who just imitates mm -hmm. your stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to be on that. You need to see what people are doing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it kind of just gets to me. I'm like, oh, really? Okay, cool. Oh, that's what you're doing? Fine, I know what to do next, you know? Mm -hmm. I can't, I, I, I need to be on top of my game. Mm -hmm. Like, Constantly, yeah. so I need to see all these things, yeah, yeah. you know. So sometimes I'm just like, oh, cool, this is what you're doing now. That's what I'm going to do next, you know. Yeah. So you, it makes you very unpredictable, and you just—I mean, it's just the way it works now. It's—it's it's, it's crazy, but it's what the world's come to. So you just need to—you need to get with it. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get with the program. So <laughs> we gotta do it, you know. So that it's there because it's been too many years I'm putting off, and uh, I'm like, yeah, I gotta do this now. I'm do it. Did you get a key on the? King Sonia, I do. I know you met him. Yeah, I met him. I, I hopefully, hopefully, I love him. Hopefully, it's gonna work he's out. He's such a cool he's, guy. He's such a cool guy. Yeah. And it's funny that, I mean, <laughs> when I met him, I was like, uh, Queen was saying, I was like, I heard a lot about you, Queen. He never stopped talking about you. I'm oh. like, oh shit. Yeah, yeah. And then I gave him a shirt, and it was like, he's gonna wear it now. He wants to wear it. I'm like, what? <laughs> and he just put it on, yeah. took off his shirt, and put it on him. He's he, such he, a. I was like, let's take a photo. I'm like, yeah. wow. Yeah. He's like, such an awesome, 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 awesome. just an I'm awesome like, guy. And I'm just, I'm so, I mean, these are the kind of things I, I get excited about when I, when I meet with all these legends and they, they give me like a pat on the back. Yeah. Like, that is something that I cannot buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, I'm like, it's, I find it so, no, it's fun to share your life and, yeah. you know, to people that yeah. admire you. Yeah. But at the same token, it's the same thing. It's like, you know, you know, like for me, there's, there's a personal life that I have. And then yeah. there's like the professional life as a model, as a, as a content Creative, curator yeah. as well, too, where I'm just like, OK, I filmed something in this month. Do yeah. I post it now? Do I wait? I don't know when it's coming out. Like, yeah. you know, it's like, how much do I give and how does that determine the sort of like the cycle of the work that I'm producing? Mm. And am I allowing that to impact and influence, you know, me fine tuning certain things about the the the, the journey. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah, it could be tricky. Yeah, yeah, yeah it could be tricky, and um, sometimes it's just for me, it's finding connection with people. Mm -hmm. You know what I discovered about like, my Instagram page, for example. What I know people love to mm -hmm. see is my process. Mm. I connect with people a lot because people want to see how you did all that. Like, how did you do that? Mm -hmm. So what's going through your mind when you're painting people mm. or when you're painting that canvas or when you do... What it, so when I just show people like a time lapse of me doing something, people pick on it, like people mm. share it. I can watch the traction. Mm. I can see people sending me messages. And I, and I kind of get it that this is a connection. So mm. sometimes I have to keep doing that. Yeah. It keeps me on my toes mm. and also it keeps me engaging with people. Now, what keeps you out there, what keeps you on the explore page of Instagram, for example, yeah. is, is, is your engagement with yeah. people. Yeah. The people are engaging with you. People, yeah. people like, they can track people coming to your page and where they're coming from, you know? Right, right. So, I mean, if that is always happening, then you become a prime um, target for brands, mm -hmm. you become mm -hmm. a prime target for mm -hmm. investment. Mm -hmm. Like, I've seen people, like, just email me like oh I want to work with you like I did work with Kenneth Cole the mm -hmm. one they, they, they consider me an influencer so I'm like oh cool influencer mm -hmm. oh, I like that term like uh, one of the influencers wants you to do something with you but I like you to post it on your Instagram yeah 
yeah. you know, I got a bunch of shoes from K-Suites, also wanted me to, and I get all this, you yeah. know, yeah. Nike and all yeah. that stuff. And everybody are looking at you like, okay, now you're in this space where people are connecting with you now. People want to ride on that. Yeah. You know, you become like a horse, technically. <laughs> that they want like, oh, we want everybody to get my brand because this guy yeah. is people engaged with him. Eyes. All these eyes, yeah. you know, are yeah. looking at him. Yeah. So how do you put yourself in that? Should you just yeah. always continue to engage with the people. Yeah. Don't forget, eventually, if you just become more about all those brands, then people are going to start yeah. um, like, like, oh, okay, we, we've seen enough. Okay, we know you're making, you know, but they don't want, they don't want just those brands. They want you. Yeah. So it's eventually, eventually, it's you need to find you that connects with that other person yeah. that, you know, people actually, because I, people also come to me like, we just love what you do mm -hmm. and they don't want to buy art, they just want to meet with me and say, oh, but thank you for what you're doing. Thank mm -hmm. you for putting your art out there. Mm -hmm. It's encouraging some of us and some of us, you know, feel more empowered that, you know, you're doing this mm -hmm. and you're doing this not just for us, but for our children. Mm -hmm. Things like that yeah. hit me real, like, I'm like, yeah, I'm on path. Yeah. Like, I'm doing something right. And so, even yeah. you've done a lot of collaborations. You've done yeah, a collaboration yeah, with Nike. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. did Barclay Center. Yeah. You've worked with you know the talented, amazing <laughs> <laughs> Beyonce. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, bunch yeah. of nominations yeah. for the videos and the work that you guys um, that she did with Lemonade. Yeah. Um, you work with Black Coffee, amazing South African yeah, DJ. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to bring a bunch of other stuff out. <laughs> bunch. Yeah. Bunch. Crazy year. And it has been through. I think she found you off social media, Beyonce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she found me on social media. When, when I met with her and she was discussing the project with me, Lemonade, um, it was, it was unreal to, 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 to hear it from her mouth. Mm -hmm. Like she actually went on Instagram and went to Facebook, went on my Twitter, went on my YouTube. Nobody goes to my YouTube, literally. Like, I just mm -hmm. don't know it, but, mm -hmm. but she literally, went on all those, all those, all those uh, platforms mm -hmm. and she checked out my stuff mm -hmm. just to be sure it was me. Mm -hmm. She did a lot of work, she showed a lot of people and then she, she told me though she loved, she, I really like what you're doing with your jackets. I posted that two weeks ago. That was that, I posted it two weeks before wow. the meeting. And I'm like, you know, my head was like, shh, what? She's been watching. You know, so, I mean, things like that make me know that mm -hmm. you just always need to put your best foot out. Mm -hmm. Put your stuff. Let people see it. Don't be scared. People are going to copy you. I mean, I had every artist always has that. You know, we're always like, we're very protective of our stuff. You know, when it comes to intellectual property, yes. if you're not big enough, you're always scared of the next bigger person's mm -hmm. looking at your idea and spinning off. You can mm -hmm. tell when people spin off your stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you use that code, still like an artist, artist still, mm -hmm. I know when somebody's biting me. Mm -hmm. Even sometimes you can't see, mm -hmm. but I know that. Oh, mm -hmm. I know where he got out from or we know where people get stuff mm -hmm. from, you know? And you don't want to be on that side where you have this idea that you cherish so much, but you know you're going to make something off and then somebody steals it from you. You need to look beyond that and know that where your ideas are coming from, it's you and it's never going to end. I, you just have to let it out. Yeah. Sometimes just don't bother. I mean, what is yours will come to you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, of course, and, and if you can sue his ass, somebody takes your job, go ahead, get your lawyer and sue their ass. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. It's, it's, it's been an interesting journey just like watching you. And it's, you know, hearing that you started off initially as a musician and you're in yeah. South by Southwest, yeah. which is in Austin. Yeah. And then now it's the art that's. Yeah. So it just feels like there's 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 a we, there's thing, it's still been on, um, it's like a yarn. Layers. Layers, layers, yeah. layers, and layers, and yeah. layers. And yeah. I think, like you said, you know, when it comes from within, when it comes from the core, yeah. that person cannot take. What is innate to you? Well, away nobody from you. can take what yeah. is away from you. It's always gonna come around to you eventually. Mm. It's just time. Yeah. Just and, willing to wait. Yeah. And when you saw her working and just like the whole production and yeah, everything, lemonade, right? Yeah. How did that inspire and motivate you? I mean, to be honest with you, I used to think I was really busy until I met her mm. and watch how I just. Just watching her learn dance routines, talk to the dancers, get some stage to, to dance, and then um, she, she gets back to look at the camera, mm. and they're playing back on the screen, and mm. there's a color, and she doesn't like something, mm. and she cuts everything, she goes back again. Mm. She doesn't like a move, she changes it, she goes back and dances. She's the first to get on to dance calls the other dancers, inspires everybody to get off, and she's the last to get off. 
whatever comes to be, she totally deserves it. I mean, yeah. you're not looking at somebody. She's hard working asset, like constantly. Mm -hmm. And you can see this mm -hmm. a stroke of genius in somebody. It's, it's all about practice. And people don't know. It's all about practice sometimes. Even the best constantly have to practice. You have to practice like mm -hmm. you've never won anything in your life. Yeah. So what does it mean to be Yoruba? It's, I mean, that question is, is, is huge. I don't even know where to take it from. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just taking it from the people itself. Mm -hmm. The fact that, you know, in West Africa, thanks to, you know, slave trade. Yeah. Um, Yoruba people have traveled. Yeah. So you find a lot of Yoruba speaking people in Cuba. Mm -hmm. which I call my brothers and sisters because, mm -hmm. you know, now, you know, we're beginning to... Yoruba people who live in West Africa really don't have so much insight about how far Yoruba has traveled. Mm -hmm. The fact that people, even after three, four hundred years, yeah. they still speak Yoruba. Yeah. But because Yoruba is a little bit tainted with the Spanish, it's tainted with a little bit of, um, um, like, the tone. You yeah. know, Yoruba is very tonal. Yeah. Now, if you watch some documentary, you see some stuff about comparing the different tones of Yoruba language as, as, you know, had to evolve over the years because right. a lot of times Yoruba people have had to hide, you know, their culture, yeah. hide their practices, hide their religion, mm -hmm. and mix it with, you know, other religions. Mm -hmm. Like, when you go to Brazil, you see the crucifix, you see Jesus on one side, mm -hmm. you turn the crucifix, you mm -hmm. see Yemoja on the other yeah. side. And that was just genius in the sense that they were not even allowed to practice. Mm -hmm. They made up their mind right. to practice yeah. and pass it on to the next generation mm -hmm. and the next generation. Mm -hmm. So I come from that lineage of people who are very, very, very protective mm -hmm. of what is theirs. I come from a lineage of people who are very, 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 they considered Yoruba people, Yoruba culture, Yoruba traditional language to be very sacred. They consider mm -hmm. it very important to this world and mm -hmm. what we bring to the world is actually very important. So we. We are proud of that and we are proud to share it to the world. So Yoruba is not just West Africa anymore, it's yeah, global. It's global. So yeah. we see ourselves as global yeah. citizens. We are citizens of the world yeah. and we're here. Yeah. And when you when you find us, wherever you find us, <laughs> we're doing amazing things. Absolutely. I'm sorry, this is what we are. Yeah. We don't we know they carry last. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> we need to tell people that this is who we are. We are not going anywhere. You can't kill this. Though maybe it was killed with my parents or killed with my grandparents, but there's a set of Africans now that you can consider woke. Woke. You use that word. <laughs> You're about to that. You know, stay we are, woke. Yeah, stay woke. <laughs> so we are we are getting there. Yeah. You know, it's it's unfortunate that you find out that even maybe African Americans are more woke yeah, yeah, in things yeah. about yeah. than Africans. Yeah. But people don't even get that. You know, mm. like I talk to African American friends, they don't understand. They think we all woke yeah. or we all should come from that wealth of tradition. So when you see Africans and you see them that they don't even care about traditions, all they want to do is come here and just be a doctor, you know, fly high, do everything. But when you tell, ask them about their religion, they're like, they're more Christian than dumb one. They're like, huh, how did that happen? Colonizer, right. Colonialism. It's, it, was so, yeah, it was deep. It's still happening. It's still happening, man. What does feminism mean to you? Hmm. It's... Based yeah. on the history, and the, you know, we've we've talked about the long, you know, history of women in Yoruba culture, African culture. You know, there's a lot of things that um, that actually led troops. We had Yoruba women who were part of decision making, were part of the elders' council. They were not kings, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they chose kings. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at the likes of Fumlaya and some Kusi and mm -hmm. see the kind of influences they actually did you know, in mm -hmm. Nigeria to women, what they did. Then you're like, yeah, that's, 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 that's somebody who we all look up to. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you I'm for so me. happy Thank you for me, we got to do this. Thank you for having me, man. Thanks for and... having me. <laughs> you want to sing for us? Me? <laughs> sing? <laughs> I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to learn how to DJ, though. This, this is That's the <laughs> Yeah. So. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank I you appreciate. So much for I appreciate me. your time. So let me do a little song. And yesterday becomes history. It's not the same way it used to be. If I could change, and what can I do to make the clock stop? It's far from any day. It doesn't matter how long we live, but how? It's all the end of the show. We take a while, I live the washing in the night, but I'll be glad to say, ah, uh, ah, uh, I live the life, yes, cause I see color, like it, I love, 
Thank you so much for joining us on today's episode of Eye of Africa. Thank you so much to Lovely Shea Banjo, and thank you all for watching. Until the next one, take care. Be good, be good, be good.